Good afternoon and welcome to Groves Academy, April admissions webinar and information session. We are so glad you could join us today. My name is Kim Ani. I'm the transitions advocate here at Groves Academy. I've been here for 13 years and have had a variety of different roles in my time at Groves. My role today is to act as a host and moderator. So questions that you have, I will direct to appropriate panel members. To do this, you'll float your mouse to the bottom of your screen and float it over the Q&A bubbles. And if you click on that, you can type in your question. Again, I'll direct those to appropriate panel members. And that is what I'm gonna do next is introduce our panel. When I say your name panel, come off mute and tell us um, you know, your name, your role at Groves, how long you've been here if you wanna share that and um, next year's plans for our students only though. We don't need to know what our staff's doing next year. They're gonna be here teaching and running the school. So to start out, let's start with our admissions team. We'll start with Abby Kirschbaum. Abby? Hi everyone, I'm Abby Kirschbaum. I'm the admissions coordinator. This is my first year at Groves and I am loving it. I will be here next year. And um, in my role, I help guide families through the application process and through the student visit days. Thanks so much, Abby. Next, uh, Director of Admissions, Erica. Hi, my name is Erica Sutton. I'm the Director of Admissions. I'm the person that you speak with usually when you first start your journey into looking at GROWS, and I'm with you throughout the process of admissions. Um, I have been at GROWS for almost two years. I also plan to be here for a good long time. I hope so too. Thanks, Erica. Next, we'll meet Ellen, Director of Curriculum. Hi, everybody. My name is Ellen Engstrom, and I am the Director of Curriculum at Groves Academy. Um, my role here is to uh, supervise curriculum um, and uh, to uh, uh, help teachers, train teachers, and support teachers as they implement the curriculum. And I've been at Groves for 16 and a half years, though not consecutively. Thank you very much, Ellen. Next, we'll meet um, Dan Morgan. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Morgan. I am the president of Groves Learning Organization. Uh, you may or may not know that Groves has uh, three very closely intertwined divisions. We have our Groves Learning Center, where we do assessment, diagnostics, and a number of other things. We have our literacy partnerships, where we share literacy expertise with schools in our community in the Twin Cities and beyond. And of course, the heart and soul of Groves, which is Groves Academy, uh, nearly now 50 years worth of experience working with these amazing kids that we see. Uh, and we're really excited to speak to you today. I've been with Groves for almost two and a half years now. I've moved around a lot for work and I'm hoping to retire here. It's gonna be a, hopefully a long time that I'm here with Groves. So thanks so much for joining. Thank you, Dan. And our head of school, Kim Peoples. Good afternoon, everyone. Kim Peoples, very fortunate to serve as head of school for Groves Academy and have been doing so for, this is my fifth school year, uh, but also very fortunate to have the hat of a former Groves parent, and that was for nine years. And my role is to really serve the, our students, our faculty, our families of Groves, and to make sure that we're operating well academically, that we're serving the social emotional needs of our students, and that we are running a tight, uh, a very tight, uh, but effective academic ship, and that we are preparing our students, our students for the future that they well deserve. Thank you, Ms. Peoples. Now we're gonna meet um, my favorite panelist, and that is our parents and students. Let's start with Sarah. Sarah? Good afternoon, I'm Sarah Metalla, and my son is a student in the lower school. He is, this is his second year, and he's very excited to be starting a third year next year at Gross. And we are excited to have him back for next year. Thank you, Sarah. Next, let's meet Mary. Hi everyone, I'm an upper school parent, been with Groves for five years. Uh, my son is graduating this year. It's been a great journey. And then Shauna. Hi, my name is Shauna Headland, and I have two kids 
at uh, Groves. One of them is in the lower school and one of them is in the middle school. They are sixth graders. One is a fifth grader and one is an eighth grader. And next year they will be? Next, next year, we don't know yet if one will be sixth grade in lower or middle school, waiting to ever hear about that. And then the other one will be remaining or moving to high, the upper school. Thank you very much, Shauna, for sharing that. And now our students. Um, let's start with Amber. Amber? I'm Amber. I'm in eighth grade and I've, I've been at, this is my seventh year at Groves. And I am going to the upper school next year. Thank you very much, Amber. And um, we've already met his parent, Luca. Hi, my name is Luca Dawson. I'm a high school senior here at Groves Academy. This is my fifth year here. And next year I plan on attending Montana State for mechanical engineering, or taking a gap year in Whistler, Canada, then moving on to Montana State. Exciting, yeah, I saw some fist pumps on that. Very excited for you, Luca, and super proud of you and super proud of Amber, who's going to be in our high school next year. So those of you that joined us after I did a brief introduction of myself, I'm Kim Ani, Transitions Advocate. I'm here today to act as moderator and host and to get your questions um, answered by different members of our panel. To do that, float your mouse to the bottom of your screen, click on the Q&A bubble and type in your question, and then I will direct it to an appropriate panelist. To start off, question one that we have, um, I'm gonna direct this to our parents and students. Why is Groves different from other schools and or the school that you attended prior to Groves? Uh, I'm gonna start with our students on that and then turn to our parents. Amber, are you ready to answer that question? Well, there are smaller class sizes. Like, it, at least for me, I had at my old school 30 kids in my class and now there's eight at the most, like 10 kids in a class. And so then you get more one-on-one -on -one help from the teacher. Thank you, Amber. Luca, your thoughts on that question? I would definitely have to agree with Amber on uh, the class sizes being a lot smaller, um, which does lead to a much more, um, much uh, larger relationship with the teacher getting one-on-one -on -one help um, and uh, teachers feel like uh, mentors more than uh, teachers in, ten, in the sense of a school setting. Uh, and it really builds not only character, but also um, on the learning experiences. And it makes me and my fellow students really excited to come to school the next day and learn what we're gonna learn. Thank you so much, Luca. So parents, we'll turn to you. Um, talk about from a parent perspective and watching your child uh, at Groves, why is Groves different from other schools and or different from the school that you came from? Um, Mary, can we start with you? Sure. Um, I, I'm going to focus in on partnership. I, I have always felt that Groves was a partner in Luca's education. Um, I wasn't a problem that needed to be solved. Luca wasn't a problem that needed to be solved. Um, and Groves has just continued to walk alongside his uh his ex education and experience and sort of his, his growth. And I've just really, my husband and I have really appreciated knowing that Groves is there to turn to. Um, whenever, you know, Luca came up against struggles, we knew that this, we could turn to the school and we wouldn't be met with fill out these forms and do this and do that and, and no solution. So partnership. Thank you, Mary. Shauna, do you want to share your thoughts on that, please? Yeah, I, um, I can't, Say enough about the significance of the class sizes and the individualized attention that our kids receive and um, that has allowed me to one witness my kids become their own advocates they're being taught how to advocate for themselves and also um, how to become a parent that witnesses their kid growth going through growth and change and academic advancement instead of having to be constantly um, engaged in a part of it and doing the advocacy myself, um, that their, what their students and what the school wants for my kids is what I want for them too. Thank you, Shauna. And Sarah, your thoughts. I agree with everything that Mary and Shauna talked about. One thing I can add, my perspective is um, the previous school 
had boxes and they were expecting my son to fit into one or two of those boxes. And if it didn't, if he didn't respond to the inputs that they were giving him, they didn't know what to do. And they kind of just gave up his, I think I gave up on them before they gave up on me um, because I had already kind of committed to Groves and knew that that was the next step. So I didn't really have much energy to fight it, but that's how I felt was he 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 wasn't exceed he wasn't succeeding and he wasn't really causing much of a problem so he just was a body in a classroom and um groves certainly keeps him accountable to learn and um does everything that they can to figure out how he is going to learn and shifts gears accordingly to accomplish that thank you sarah for sharing that uh, the next question is um, about transitioning into Groves and what that process felt like and looked like. Uh, I know it's a big question for many parents, but also on behalf of their children as they're looking into moving into a different school. Um, reflect back on that a bit, and I'll talk to our students first because they're the, they're the ones that walk through the doors and feel what it's like to move into a new environment. Think back on when you came into Groves, things that um, went well, uh, things that maybe were a little bit challenging or maybe not. Uh, let's start with Amber on that. Amber? Uh, it was so long ago. Um, prop, one of the easier things for me was making friends because you walk in the doors of the groves and everyone is very similar to you, like in the style you learn in. So it was really easy to connect with other students in my class and make um, friends right on the first day. Thank you, Amber. Luca, um, about that talk a little bit about your transition into Groves from your past school. Um, for my transition, um, I knew that uh, Groves is probably the right place for me to end up, but at the time, I really didn't want to move schools. I didn't want to leave my friends behind. Uh, and I was very sad to, to move schools. But looking back on it, it's definitely one of the best things that have happened in my education career. Uh, my grades went immediately up. I was finding more and more friends. I already knew one of the students here from my previous school. Uh, and it was just after the first month, uh, I forgot all about not wanting to come to the school, and I was just excited to be there. Thank you, Luca. So parents, uh, from a parent perspective, and watching your child and your family um, adjust to transitioning into Groves, um, let's start with Mary to talk about what that was like for you and your family. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Luca came into Groves seventh grade to eighth grade. And so middle school is tough time for kids. It's, there's a lot going on, uh, hormones and friendships. Um, and so there was definitely a period of grieving that I, I think I wish that we had, like as a family, not on Groves, but I think I wish we had thought more about like what, um, what that meant for Luca and just talking to him a bit more about how we could have supported uh, continuing friendships from one school to the other. Um, just reflecting back now, there's probably more we could have done. Of course, tried. <laughs> um, but then um, the, the first few weeks were really difficult. And I'll say it again, Groves was our partner in that. Um, the, you know, they were there to come out to the car and, and talk to Luca and talk him into coming into the building. It wasn't, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a smooth transition. He didn't walk out of the car and sort of bound into the school on day one. Um, but he um, definitely, like he said, it, you know, after about a month, he really felt that he was home and Groves was the place he needed to be. But, but that transition was, was difficult and Groves was our partner. Thank you, Mary. Shauna, uh, you wanna reflect back on that experience for you and your family? Yeah, um, I would say our, both of our kids were at a point where they knew that their schools that they were in, they were in Minneapolis public schools. And though they had great connections and really loving teachers, um, they both knew that, that their time there was not well spent. Um, one of them 
blamed himself and so really was had lost self-esteem as a learner um and the other one just entirely I just knew that it wasn't him it was the school it, and they literally <laughs> he just it was three miles away and he would just walk out of school and walk home um so and if anybody for everybody that knows who I'm talking about that probably doesn't surprise you <laughs> <laughs> um and um I would say they both had different experiences. Um, for Wilder, it was a warm up. Um, first few days were awesome. And then he realized, like, oh, actually, I'm going to do some homework here and this is going to be rigorous. And then he wasn't sure about it for a while. And then he just realized that he was capable of doing what they were, what the school was asking of him, and, and has just been um, very positive ever since and um, really liked totally he's just absolutely engaged and um for Wesley his teacher gave him skittles on the first day and he's been in ever since <laughs> okay that good for him <laughs> that's terrific uh and Sarah um as a, a lower school parent you talk about the transition in for you as a parent sure um so my son was ready to go he had a wonderful experience uh, visiting as a visiting student and it was the day before pandemic shut down so I was so relieved to have had him have that experience for that one day so he knew what to expect come September um, but then I got to I had the joy of telling him through the spring of that pandemic year when everybody was distance learning, he would say every morning, well, why don't I just go to Groves Mom? Why can't I just go to Groves Mom? The whole time. So I was very excited come September for him to start. And he was as well. Um, I think though, I think he was expecting just day after day of that student visiting experience. And I think it, it caught up to him and he realized that maybe he needed to work on some social skills. And I, I have to say for parents, in, in attendance that the counseling that he has gotten just a weekly check-in that was identified very early that he would benefit from has been helpful and it's been continued it's continued for the entire time that for the for these two years and at the beginning it was a lot of check-in with both teacher and counselor and I don't think I've checked in with any of them since November so something's going I mean I, I sometimes just say no news is good news and I hold on to that. But it's it's so it's been fun to watch him just navigate it all on his own. And some days are good and some days are bad, but all in all, I found this year that his academic has excelled and his social has stumbled a little bit. So I'm like, I'll take it. I'm okay with that. So just know it may happen that way. <laughs> and it's okay. Sarah, thank you for being so open and sharing that. Um, Sarah talked about our counselors. Ms. Peoples, could you talk about the counseling support staff here at Groves Academy and what that looks like by division? Absolutely. Our approach to counseling is really a team approach. We have uh, counselors for each division, and though we have counselors for each division, they really work together uh, to work with our teachers, to work with our students, and also to work with our families. Um, we individualize um, what we do to support our students to their needs. We are in constant communication with um, each other, especially with our families. And um, we work together to make sure that we are addressing the needs of the students, the relationships that they have with the teachers, and where appropriate, any outside counseling that's taking place, we're making sure that of course, we have the appropriate permissions, but that we are in communication uh, where appropriate uh, to make sure that we are doing the things that we need to do to support our students. Uh, so we certainly try to take a holistic approach to make sure that the remediation and the education that we're offering at Grows is being supporting with being supported um, with um, any support that we need to do to make sure that our students are feeling. Um, healthy and whole emotionally as well. Thank you, Ms. Peoples. Um, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit to talk about things that happen outside of our school day. And I'm gonna focus on our students for this a little bit. Um, 
first question is about homework. Talk about your homework load uh, and what that looks like. Um, let's start with Luca. Luca? Uh, yeah, so my homework load, um, especially towards the beginning of my senior year, uh, was uh, much larger than the typical student because I took um, a college course at Normandale Community College. Uh, I took college writing um, and that happened online. Uh, and I do all of that homework at home. Um, but during the school day and the schoolwork I got from Groves, um, I would work very hard on in school and in the building. Because um, to me, the building is the place where I'm focused 100% of the time. Um, I'll do my homework during lunch, during the breaks and the study halls that they present to us. Um, and I come home with little to none homework, um, not because they don't assign it, but because I'm able to do it in school. Um, I know for other people that doesn't work, but for me, that's what I do. Um, and the homework load feels much more um, reasonable to what students should be asked for, where it's more on topic, um, even if there is less of it, um, it's uh, getting the same point across in each assignment. Thank you, Luca. Amber, um, your thoughts about homework and what that looks like for you as a middle schooler, but I know you were in lower school as well. Um, in middle school, you get probably a half an hour to an hour of homework. And then sometimes it'll be more depending on if you have like a geography or science test coming up. But I know for me, it's also a little more because I'm taking an upper school math class. So that just adds a little bit more homework. Thank you, Amber. So um, I'm going to talk to Ms. Peoples next about our philosophy on homework, but before uh, Ms. Peoples answers, uh, both Luca and Amber have talked a little bit about things they're doing in their school day that are beyond um, what you would consider normal for a student in middle school or upper school. Luca is part of PSEO, that's post-secondary educational opportunities. Uh, and then Amber, because she is um, good at math, obviously, is in a freshman math class. So we have that flexibility within our day and looking at your student as an individual to make sure that we're meeting their needs in areas that they excel at um, and also being able for Luca's case to branch out and try something outside of Groves that would lead into his post-secondary options. So um, thank you for sharing that part. Ms. Peoples, let's talk a bit about our philosophy on homework. Right. In terms of our philosophy of homework, we don't view homework as an opportunity for teachers to demonstrate how rigorous their courses are or how difficult they are as teachers and to build their chops as teachers. We view homework as an opportunity as an extension of what students are learning in the classroom and support of what they're learning in the classroom. And it is an extension of the classroom experience. If they're not able to do the homework at home independently, then it tells us, it signals us that there's some additional instruction, there's some additional work that we need to do in the classroom to make the homework experience clear. And we ask parents to be partners with us um, if there are challenges with homework, to not just roll up your sleeves and do the homework for your student or alongside your student, but to give us communication in well, what was difficult so that we know what we need to do to make the instruction clear. And certainly we ask our students to do the same. Thanks, Ms. Peoples. Amber, I think you had your hand up. Did you have something you'd like to add? Kind of to build on what Ms. Peoples said, um, with homework, it's always review. Even like when it's assigned, it's normally review. I don't think I've ever gotten homework that's new material that I've never learned. And like I've turned in like a few assignments before with a few problems, especially in math not done because I didn't understand or remember how to do it. Amber, thank you for sharing that. Um, we have a question about our admissions timeline. Erica, do you wanna talk about that a little bit? So we do still have openings in all divisions for next year currently. So I would encourage you that if you're interested in admissions at Grows to reach out right away so we can get you in process. It is important that we start ASAP as the school year is um, and is approaching quickly. Um, as far as timeline, the first step is 
connecting with admissions, having a conversation to see if your child might be a fit. And then we will get you all the important paperwork um, and online application materials to fill out. Once we get that application completed, our admissions team reviews it. And then if it makes sense to move on um, in the process, we'll invite your child for a visit day at Groves, which is a fabulous opportunity for your child to see what it's like to be a student at Groves and experience everything has Groves has to offer. And then after that visit day, we're able to make an enrollment decision um, based on if we are a fit for your child's needs and if we have the correct placement available for your child. Um, so again, we do still have um, openings for next year in all divisions. And I would encourage you to reach out and have that conversation as soon as possible so that we can get you going in that process to complete before the end of the school year. Thank you very much, Erica. So I'm gonna turn this back to our parents and students. Uh, I would like you to, to share a little bit about extracurricular or outside of class things that you have done at Groves. Now, I realize we are um, emerging out of a pandemic that we, where we saw a little bit of change in what we've been offering, but our, what we call our ASAs or after school activities are up and running. So I'll start with, um, our students and then parents think about what your child's participated in and if anything, and we'll move through that. Um, Luca, extracurricular or outside of school activities that you participated in? Yeah, so there are three main ones that I like to participate in. Um, the first being uh, the Groves trap team or trap shooting team. Um, I believe this is our seventh year as a team uh, and we have taken a uh, regional champ, um, in, uh, uh, conference champions uh, three or four times now and our team has grown exponentially. I know Amber uh, is a new member of the team uh, and it's a really awesome tight-knit community uh, that we meet every uh, Wednesday and Saturday now uh, to practice and at the end of the year we go up to Alexandria um, to have a big uh, competition with other schools and it's actually the largest trap shooting um, event in the world. Um, second one is the theater um, or, um, the acting part of the school uh, where we do three shows in a year, a fall play, a spring play, uh, and then something called the one act, which is like competition play. Um, typically, we get a, a large turnout of students to join the play. Um, it's almost always upper school students uh, only, and we present it to each division uh, and parents as well. Uh, and the last one, my personal favorite, and I know many other students' personal favorite, is GAS or the Groves Academy Ski and Snowboard Club. Uh, we're in the winter. Every Thursday, we'll go to either uh, Highland Hills or Welch Village uh, to go skiing until 8 p.m. after school, uh, where everyone uh, from uh, middle school and upper school come together and we go skiing, snowboarding, uh, and everyone has a great time. It's definitely some of my best memories at Groves Academy. Luca, thank you so much for sharing that. Amber, are there activities uh, that you have participated in you'd like to share? Um, well, as Aluka mentioned, I am part of the Groves trap shooting team, and I've participated in some of the after-school activities here at Groves. And you're with us today because what group are you a part of, Amber? Oh, I'm part of the student ambassador group as well, where and we help with panels and like we'll help with Grandparents Day, Unity Day, new student visit days so we'll greet them at the door and we meet during lunch with Ms. Kirschbaum. Thank you for sharing that. So it's a nice leadership opportunity that we offer for our students as well. They actually go through an application process uh, with Ms. Kirschbaum from admissions and then do team building exercises to ready them for that leadership position to be able to share their story with you, but also with others that visit our school. And then they, we point to them too for visit days for our students. So it's a nice uh, active group of kids here at Groves. So parents, as, as the kids have been talking or the students have been talking about their activities, are there any other activities that your students have participated in that you'd like to share? And just give me a wave and we'll move to you. I don't know if they covered all of them. Mary? I'm not sure if Luca mentioned uh, student government. He uh, got active in student government during uh, COVID, which was kind of nice. Um, when he came, when they came back from COVID, he was like, I just wanna, I just wanna surround myself with people and activities because <laughs> that was a really long few months of not, not having the school 
uh, community. Uh, but I will say gas was actually a really big part of uh, making Luca feel more comfortable at Gross. Um, gas and then also the winter, um, the middle school has a winter carnival or not really carnival, but they have a winter sale where the kids create um, items at home and then um, they line up in the halls and they get to sell them as like holiday gifts. Um, and, and both of those, like just those activities within the school really make the kids feel welcome. So, and they and take pride in their work. Excellent. I see Amber had her hand up. She must have thought of something. And then we'll um, go to Ms. Kirschbaum. Abby the, or Amber? <laughs> the name of what Mary just said was Barter Market. We would do that. We haven't done it the past two years because of COVID, but we would get we would go down into the gym and we had made items and we would barter basically with other people for their goods that they made. Thank you, Amber. And Ms. Kirschbaum, you have a new activity that came to Groves this year. You want to share what that is? Yeah, this year we started Girls on the Run, um, which is a running program for third through fifth graders. Um, and we also learn about empathy and friendship and communication and all that good stuff. And we started our practices this week and it's been going great. And we have 16 girls signed up, which is I think over half than the, uh, of the eligible girls. Um, so it's going well. I'm really excited to continue to do that. Thank you, Abby, for sharing that. Um, Ellen Engstrom is our director of curriculum and she um, has someplace to be in a few minutes but I wanted her to talk a little bit about one of the big questions we get is around classroom groupings and how we come to those decisions because we do have mixed, mixed grade groups. So I'll let Ellen share a little bit about that. Ellen? Sure. Um, well, in, uh, uh, in lower school, students have uh, where a lot of those or a lot of the questions come related to lower school class groupings, I think. Um, lower, uh, students are all assigned to a homeroom teacher. Um, and those class and the kids who are in the homeroom group will, um, that's, they'll be in there for, um, uh, for, uh, for when they arrive in the morning, they'll do literature and writing in that class. And they'll also, um, do uh, science and social studies. And then students will switch for math and for reading instruction. And that'll be, those placements will be based on where students are academically. So there will be some switching of classes based on the, uh, uh, on academic levels in reading and math. Uh, the way that we come to those uh, decisions to how to group students is that we look at, we want to make sure that there's uh, some balance of um, girls and boys. Uh, we want to be sure that the students in the group have some, um, you know, some similarities, some commonalities that are likely to mesh together well for a group. Um, so we look at not just academic needs, but social and emotional uh, function and hoping to support that. And uh, uh, in general, you know, we want to also, uh, we do combine grades in, um, in some classes, third, fourth grade, some fourth, fifth, some fifth, sixth. Um, and we want to make sure that students have, you know, the developmental levels are more or less on a par. Um, and that students, you know, are will be able to um, create friendships and um, and you know and have positive experience and feel a sense of belonging to their classes. So we do that based on lots of lots of uh, you know lots of information that admissions collects and uh, uh, things that we've come to learn about the student through visit days and other reports and so on. So, and, you know, we've been, um, uh, and it, it has in general worked really very well over the years. Ellen, thank you so much for sharing that. I know it's uh, something that many parents think about and really mm -hmm. wonder, how do we decide to do all this? So um, thank you. 
for sharing that. Um, next question is for our parents. So we are a smaller school community. And one of the challenges many families feel coming into Groves is lack of communication from their school. So if you could share your experience, uh, either at a division level, a teacher level, or what that's been like with communication you've received from Groves, from teachers, and how that has um, manifested itself for you and your student. I know, Sarah, you talked a little bit about it and, and the help we've been giving your child. Um, let's start with Mary on that. Mary? Thanks. Um, I, I guess I'll talk a little bit about how Luca has been supported through college admissions. Um, so uh, we have an older son. So we watched, watched that process two, three years ago um, when he was applying to school and um, we're really curious how this was going to manifest itself at Groves. Um, the public school my son was at was a little bit hands off. They just assumed if the kids, you know, the kids would come for help if they wanted it. Um, Groves has a dedicated counselor that uh, works with the classes or works with the students um, starting in their junior year uh, to start thinking about what they're interested in um, for, for after Groves, be it college, a gap year, uh, technical school, community college, or career. Um, and then they sort of, they start to hone um, what needs to happen to help that student uh, make that a reality. Um, and so Luca um, did apply to about six schools. Um, so uh, hearing back, he did, was accepted to Montana State, which was super exciting um, very early on, like last fall. So that just took a huge weight off, <laughs> off everyone's shoulders. Uh, but it's been really nice. We've had Miss Lucas to go, not Miss Lucas, Miss Jonas to go to um, with any questions. Um, she keeps him on track for deadlines, um, has helped him with the essay application process. Um, has facilitated getting uh, the um, uh, reference letters that he needed uh, and class things. So it's just been really nice. And, and, we've, and she's kept us up to date um, on, on how things were moving forward. Um, and we've met together with Luca. So it's, it's just a really nice, I'm gonna go back to the word partnership um, that uh, they walked alongside us as Luca uh, thought about his future. Mary, thank you for sharing that. I know. Um, that's a big step to college and post-secondary. And I, I am challenged to find any other school or institution that has a counselor that works as hard as Michelle does to help students guide through that. So um, thank you for sharing that experience. Shauna, um, any thoughts about communication uh, for your family and students that they, as they have been at Groves? Yes. Um, I. Again, I just can't say enough about the individualized attention that our kids get and the, um, the communication, the relationships that our kids have with their own teachers and other people in the school just really show up in how those folks then communicate with us as parents. I just feel like we're really engaged as a unit. We're working together and um, they have so much respect for our relationships with our kids. Um, and keep us as informed as we, as we want to be. Um, my kids don't talk a lot about their school experience. And so sometimes I'm finding out from the teachers what's going on. Um, and actually, I think that the, the kids appreciate that. Um, and also, I just to um, talk a little bit about transitions too. I didn't know when we became a Gross family that there was assistance with transition. So when our eighth graders started asking what's next um, and this, it like activated this whole source, this whole um, workforce <laughs> at Groves on his behalf, I was just kind of blown away. I didn't know we were gonna get help with that. So that has just been um, so encouraging and heartwarming and creates such a sense of security in, um, the continuation of what's been fostered for our kids at Groves. Um, it's deeply appreciated. Thanks, Shana, for sharing that. Um, Sarah, do you have, and I'm the transitions advocate that Shana is referencing, so, um, but yeah, I enjoyed, um, I have enjoyed working with you and will continue. Um, we decided and determined the path for Shana's older son was to stay for at least another year in our high school, maybe beyond. We will continue to evaluate and look at that. 
but because um, the student was asking and inquiring and curious, um, parents said, well, let's, let's find out what this might look like. So I've enjoyed working with you as well. Um, Sarah, anything to add about communications and what that's been like um, yeah. for you? My favorite response to this question is there is. I mean, I, 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 my previous experience was, you know, really a lot of initiation from me when we weren't seeing evidence of reading with our child, with our son. And I, I think it really came home for me this year. It's his second year. And I don't know, maybe it was early November. I got a no, an e I received an email. We received an email that said, we recommend that he participate in RTI. And somebody's going to have to tell the parents what RTI stands for, because every time it goes into my head, it leaves again. I can't, it's not intuitive to me. But, um, and, and from then on, he received four days of individual reading instruction, which would be before he went to his reading group. So he was getting one-on-one -on -one help on lessons that he would be receiving merely five minutes later. He would be receiving 45 minutes of one-on-one, -on -one, and then he'd go into his reading group and hear the same thing. And, you know, within a few weeks, it went down to two days a week. But again, that was not initiated by me. That was initiated by the experts that are surrounded by my child. And they knew what he needed. They were, they've been around him for six to seven hours a day. And they know what he needs better than I do at that point, because I don't know how to teach reading. And so that's like been, and, and since that time, since this RTI process has started, um, I mean, leaps and bounds for for his reading and you know he's re and speaking to homework assignments just briefly it related to reading it's not like he loves it yet and so it takes a lot of effort to get him to do it every night and he does it every night but it takes some effort from us to just say okay we're going to open the book now um and he has a long-term reading book pro book project for the spring and the first sentence was okay, we're going to have a, a chapter review with every, ch a, write a chapter review. And I was just like, oh my gosh, how many chapters are we going to have to do? And it just kind of, you know, caused me some worry. She knows what he can handle. And she assigned him four chapters. Of the 12 chapters, he has to do four chapter reviews. And I'm like, that is completely doable. So that's, it's just the right fit for us. Thank you very much. And um, what you're looking for is response to intervention, RTI. Yep. <laughs> um, so, uh, and you explained that very well, Sarah. So we identified that um, her child was struggling in a particular area of reading or something just wasn't quite going right. So we decided to take that small classroom environment and take it to that next level for a while and see if we could get things moving. And we have and we are. So um, that's what that's all about. Mary, did you have your hand up for something? Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I muted you. I, I was trying to help and I did not okay. help. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, you know, especially for new parents thinking about groups, it's not it's not that your child won't be expected to do work, right? Like it's not, it's not like, it, it's, I mean, Groves, I think the class education is rigorous. It's just that it's, it's more individualized, right? Like they really take into consideration what is the child capable of today and where are we trying to get them to? It's not that we're, we're it's not that, we're not going to make. We're not going to challenge them. Groves does challenge our kids, um, and they but they challenge them in a way that makes them feel like they can achieve, which is not something that I got to experience at the other public school. It was just defeat, 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 and um, so that like that's just a really big difference uh, at at Groves um, Learning Organization. They just um, they are they're really there to make sure that our kids learn, and they know our kids can learn. It's, it's a huge difference. I'm gonna start crying, so thank you. <laughs> Mary, thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. Um, would you and have Kim, a question? Oh, go Kim, ahead. if I can go. just jump in, because Mary, you just said that, that so well, and it's something that we say all the time, where we just meet you where, we, where you are, 
and we take you where you are capable of going. That's just our entire function. And it's not about coddling. I mean, our students can tell you that all the time. It's not about making you, you feel good or, or giving you just enough so you can feel like you can be successful. We want to challenge. We want you to take you to the edge of your comfort zone and give you productive stress because that's what you need to be successful, but not to the point where you will collapse and feel like you just can't go on. I mean, I can even say putting on the, the Groves parent hat. I have a son now, again, he graduated from Groves in 2020 and he's a sophomore now at, at Augsburg University. And he's still heavily connected to his teachers, um, not because I'm the, the head of school, he's connected because he still has good relationships with his teachers. And they're still genuinely interested in how he's doing. And I think he'll, he'll be meeting with one of his former teachers in about 15 minutes because she genuinely wants to help him get ready for a job interview. You know, who does that? Right, he's got two capable parents who can certainly do that, but she believes she can do it a little bit better than we can. And who are we to say no? <laughs> um, so it's that's the kind of community that we are. Um, we believe that we belong to each other. That there's a sense of connection and responsibility to not only help you to be successful where you are at the moment but where you will be in the next moments. And we believe in preparing you for the future of your own design that gives you agency. So what are the things that we have to do right now to give you that, that agency? And so all the things that you've, you've heard today are the stepping stones for that. Wow, thank you, Ms. Peoples. And I would like to say as a staff member at Groves Academy, that same um, agency is also afforded us as staff members through professional development. We are encouraged to push and stretch our boundaries too by Ms. Peoples. And um, it has made, I think when you meet staff here, you find out we've been here a long time and there's a really, really good reason for that. It's because we are allowed to learn and explore and stretch. Um, so that we can serve our students and families even better. Um, we do have a, one last question here, and then I think I'll wrap up. I wanted to do a call out. If there are any other questions or comments that need to be made, let me know through the Q&A. Um, this question is directed to admissions explicitly. Is the child's testing fairly well reviewed? So as largely determined by um, whether they would be an appropriate fit for Groves before their visit day. Uh, I will give that to Erica first. Thank you. Um, so the answer is yes. Um, our admissions process, we are um, collecting um, diagnostic testing, um, IEP evaluations, current IEP plans, if you have one, 504 plans, um, feedback from current classroom teachers, and we review all of it with a fine tooth comb. Um, but we also know there's a lot more to a child than what's on paper. And so that's the first step is really looking at their results to see if we may be a fit for their needs. Um, we don't invite a student for a visit day unless we feel we may be a fit for their needs. But then the visit day is an important determining factor to make sure of that as well. So the answer is yes, everything is very thoroughly and thoughtfully reviewed before a student is invited for a visit day. Thank you, Erica. I know it's a lot to send in, but um, you do comb through it a lot. So thank you for sharing that. With that, I think we're going to wrap things up. I would like to thank um, our parents, Sarah and Shauna and Mary, for um, sharing their experiences and, and being very clear on, on what that's been like for them, but also for their child and your family as well. And I really want to thank our students, Amber, and Luca. Luca, this might be the last time we see you on admissions panel. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And as you've heard from Ms. Peoples, we are still here and still want to know how you do next year and the year after that and the year after that. So we are here to listen, learn, and watch you grow out in the world. And Amber, your last time maybe doing this as a middle school student. So excited to see you in our high school and upper school next year as a freshman. Um, and all the things you'll explore and do as a student. With that, thank you for attending today. 
reach out to us if you have questions or additional questions to talk to admissions. We would really like to hear um, what you're thinking and what you have out there. We're getting some nice thank yous from our families that are visiting us today. So thank you for attending and asking questions. All the best.